Hello everyone. I would like to present my fifth case presentation, which will be about gustatory dysfunction, or taste disorder. Well, let me start with a little joke I found on the internet. They call our language the mother tongue. You know why? Because the father seldom gets to speak. Okay, let me tell you a little about my case now. This patient is actually the same patient I did case presentation on CVID, so I'll make this very brief. He was a 58-year-old Caucasian male, came to her clinic saying, I have painful ulcers all over my mouth for two years. This was the ulceration possibly associated with CVID. Now, what I want to discuss today is his second chief complaint, which was, I have blunted taste for sweet. He had hypertension, no known allergies, constipation and alopecia, and of course, CVID. This was his initial presentation of oral mucosa when he came to our clinic. And this is his oral mucosa after a few months after the treatment of dexamethasone mouth rinse and clobetazole gel. Ulceration is now well controlled with topical corticosteroid application on as needed basis. However, he is still complaining about the blunted taste for sweet. Is this going to come back? Well, first, let me talk about the physiology of taste. How is taste recognized and interpreted? I think it is critical to first note that gustation and flavor are different. Gustation strictly means the sensory modality generated when chemicals activate taste receptor cells and transmit signals to solitary tract nucleus of the brainstem. There are five known basic tastings, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. Any other sensation involves somatosensory neuron, such as spicy, minty, or metallic. Flavor is more general term, which also involves inputs from olfaction, or as I said, like somatosensory neurons. Taste buds are a cluster of taste receptor cells, which looks like an onion and they are found in papillae of the tongue. There are three types of papillae, fungiform, foliate, and circumvallate. Circumvallate papillae are found at the very back of the tongue and contain thousands of taste buds. Foliate papillae are present at the posterior lateral edge of the tongue and contain hundreds of taste buds. Fungiform papillae scatter around the dorsum of anterior two-thirds of the tongue and contain one or just a few taste buds. Taste buds are not only located on tongue, but they are also located in palate, epiglottis, and pharynx as well. Now, concept of a tongue map defining distinct zones for sweet, bitter, salty, and sour has largely been discredited. All of these sensations can be recognized by any taste receptor cells. Salt taste ensures the proper dietary electrolyte balance. It is basically the sodium channel on the taste receptor cells which triggers this signal. Sour warn against the intake of potentially noxious and or poisonous chemicals. It is thought to be the proton sensitive channel which recognizes pH change of the membrane and triggers the signal. 
So it is basically the acids which trigger the sensation of sour. Unlike sour and salty, which is the membrane channel that triggers the signal, bitter, sweet, and umami sensation are triggered by the membrane receptors, GPCR, or G-protein coupled receptor, that binds with specific substances. Bitter also warns against the intake of potentially noxious and or poisonous chemicals, and its receptors are made of two T2Rs. Sweet taste permits the identification of energy-rich nutrients. It is composed of a combination of T1R2 and T1R3. Umami is the fifth recognized basic taste, which was known since 1900s. But only recently in 2000, it was confirmed as the basic taste scent after the discovery of specific receptor which triggers this sensation. As you can tell from its Japanese name, it was discovered by Japanese. Umami is translated as savory taste, and it is triggered by amino acids such as glutamic acid, which is a monosodium glutamate or MSG, or inosinic acid and guanilic acid. It is not surprising that it was discovered by Japanese because Japanese foods are rich in these umami substances. So umami allows the recognition of amino acids and its receptor is composed of T1R1 and T1R3. Of course, fish or sushi is not the only food with umami, but red meats too. Now this is a chart of the basic tastes which I covered. And hot topic about the taste now is that fat taste may be officially recognized as sixth basic taste because they found a lipid receptor which triggers the sensation and now it is in under further investigation. Well, I think it makes sense to have this sensation because fat is energy. And no wonder fatty food tastes so good and also really addicting. But having too much of this, of course, comes with a consequences. Okay, I talked about the peripheral receptor, so now I should cover the pathway of the signals and where it is interpreted. Tastes are not only transmitted by the chorda tympani nerve of the facial nerve, but it is also transmitted by glossopharyngeal nerve as well as vagus nerve. They all synapse to second order neuron at the solitary tract nucleus in the brainstem. Then it is transferred to ventral posterior medial nucleus of the thalamus synapsing again to third order neuron and the signal is finally interpreted at gustatory cortex found in anterior insula frontal operculum. Now, what can cause the dysfunction of this sensation and what happens? There are three types of gustatory dysfunctions. Agusia is total loss of taste. Hypogusia is diminished sensation of taste. And dysgusia, which is abnormal sensation of taste. Agusia is extremely uncommon because taste is innervated by three cranial nerves, facial, glossopharyngeal, and vagus nerve. Hypogusia is relatively common, and Hummel et al. reported that up to 5% of the U.S. population may have hypogusia to some extent. Epidemiology of dysgusia is not known, but we commonly see this in patients with burning mouth syndrome 
or sometimes medication induced such as ACE inhibitors, antibiotics, etc. etc. Just like there are lots of drugs that can cause xerostomia, there are lots of drugs which may cause dysgeusia. Antineoplastic agents and also ACE inhibitors are common ones, but let me show you the list of classes of medications which may cause dysgeusia. Very long, right? Um, other systemic conditions reported to cause dysgeusia are like multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, meningiomas, stroke, Parkinson's, hypothyroidism, diabetes, nasal and paranasal sinus infections, HIV infection, herpes virus infections, cystic fibrosis, giant cell arteritis, renal failure, acute hepatitis, liver cirrhosis, etc, etc, etc. As I mentioned earlier, in a broader term, flavor involves olfaction and other sensory neurons. Reduced sensation of smell, anosmia or hyponosmia is far more common than taste dysfunction. In 2011, Hummel et al. reported that various reports come to a number of approximately 5% of people with functional anosmia, increasing to almost 25% anosmic subjects between 65 and 80 years old, and nearly 50% anosmic subjects in the age of group over 80 years old. Therefore, it is important to first consider olfactory dysfunction before taste dysfunction, simply from its prevalence. Hovel et al. published a systematic review of dysgeusia induced by cancer therapies. He reported prevalence of dysgeusia in the chemotherapy-only group was 56.3%. Now, radiation-only group was 66.5%, and combination therapy was 76%. Mucositis and cellular damage from radiation therapy, of course, plays a great role. But both chemotherapy and radiation therapy damage or target cells with high turnover rate. The turnover rate of normal human taste bud cells, or taste receptor cells, is 10 days, and therefore it is highly susceptible to be damaged. Taste loss is generally not observed until radiation doses of 20 gray have been administered in the head and neck regions. Partial improvement in taste can usually be found between the 20th to the 60th day, so about three weeks to about a couple of months after termination of radiation therapy, and taste generally returns to normal or near normal level within a year. However, about 15% of the patient who finished the radiation therapy never have the dysgeusia resolved. Unfortunately, treatment of dysgeusia or hypogeusia is not well established. It is a loss of sensation like anesthesia or paresthesia, which are a really tough condition to treat, and so are dysgeusia or hypogeusia. Zinc supplementation was clinically proven to be effective in treating dysgeusia in few randomized double-blind controlled study. However, its finding is not consistent with other studies, and so it is controversial. It is something which can be tried for the patient because zinc supplementation is relatively safe treatment to try, just like we tried for 
our patient. In 1996, Deems et al. reported that two-thirds of patients with dysgeusia experienced spontaneous resolution of symptoms within an average of 10 months. Unfortunately for my patient, it has been longer than 10 months and his sensation has not come back yet. Well, for my patient, he has been taking zinc supplement but he has no improvement in blunted taste. In his case, chronic mucositis is interrupting the healing process of taste receptor cells. Opportunistic infection of candida is another factor which may be causing hypogusia. Also, the treatment for his mucositis, a long-term Topical corticosteroid application can cause thinning of the epithelium, so this may be another factor contributing to his blunted taste as well. Well, that is it for my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. You're missing a popsicle, you say? Nope. Haven't seen it. <laughs>